Often, two parallel holes are used as datum features. In the past, there was some controversy about just how to establish the datum reference frame from these holes. The addition of the translation modifier in the 2009 revision of the standard has helped clear up the confusion. Let's take a look. Remember that the datum feature simulator's default condition is located at basic. On this part, A and B are regardless of material boundary. So to establish my primary datum, I would have to fill datum feature A, regardless of material boundary, and that would establish an axis. Then 100 millimeters from there, I would have another gauge element located at the 100 basic that would expand regardless of material boundary until it fills the hole. Now when it does that, it will probably only hit at one spot. It won't usually fill the hole. And it probably won't even do a very good job of stopping rotation. If I add the translation modifier, as you see here, to datum feature B, now the simulator is not locked in at the 100 basic, but is free to float until I fill the hole. And this would give me a more reproducible alignment of the datum planes. If you want to learn more about the rules of GD&T, consider taking our computer-based training because at Techies, GD&T rules. I'll see you next month.